It's now time for On the Line with Cheryl Wilkerson. The conversation will range from local dialogue to international. This show is meant to enlighten, inform, and to inspire. On the Line with Cheryl Wilkerson begins now. Welcome to On the Line. I'm your host, Cheryl Wilkerson. Thank you all for joining me on this Sunday morning. This Sunday morning. Yeah, we have a lot to get through today. So I had a guest and something happened. I don't know what happened with that. But to the rescue came a young man that uh, lives in Portsmouth, Virginia, and he's on top of things uh, nationally, locally, regionally, all of that enjoys putting the word out and enjoys making sure that his community uh, you know, knows what's going on. So I made a quick call and guess what? He said yes. And so I welcome to On the Line this morning, Mr. James Overton. Welcome. Welcome, and thank you, and good morning to you, Cheryl, and thank you for the young man comment. That was great, and <laughs> I really appreciate that. I think it's going to make my day. I'm, I'm going to walk a little straighter this today after that comment, but I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. So, thank you for inviting me. No worries. No worries at all. So, I'm one of these people that I'm always constantly keeping up with the news, and it's just in me. The I guess the way we grew up, you know, we had to listen to the news at dinner time and all of that. I always, yeah. I remember having a tape recorder when I was 11 years old. It's just been in me. And um, now the way the world has opened up as far as technology, there are many more ways for many more people to get involved. And you have seen it as one of your missions, correct me if I'm wrong, that you should tell the stories of what's going on, especially in the city of Portsmouth. Do I have that right? And if so, where does that passion come from? Yes, and, and you have that right. And we are called Portsmouth Coffee Talk. And, of course, we, we do try to uh, deal with uh, national issues as well as state issues and other cities and around Hampton Roads. But we, we do focus in on, on Portsmouth issues. And if you've been following Portsmouth lately, we have a lot to talk about there. But yes, indeed. And you talk about uh, following the news, and uh, that that was something that we did at six. You know, Walter Cronkite mm-hmm. and all those guys uh, at six, and that was important. We kept up, and then later in years, I became like a talk show uh, groupie, I guess you can say. And you were one of those people I used to follow uh, back there as far as talk shows, and that's where I got a lot of my information, and that's where I got the the, the passion to to uh, later on when I had the opportunity to share information uh, about different stories. And, and mm-hmm. I also like to do those those human interest stories about people because a lot of times you'll see people in, in the news and you don't really know that person. You know, they, they might be doing some great things mm-hmm. out there that, that's publicly uh, announced, but, you know, sometimes I like people to get to know that person and, and know how that, how that person ticks, you know, and that's a part of what we do as well. That is wonderful. I have a friend, he does a talk show, and he calls his listeners Voices of the Village. And yes, why do you think it's so important that the village be out there and ready to receive the information that's going out? I, I think it's, it's, it's so important because, well, especially if, you, if you're talking about politics, and, and politics uh, it comes up in just about all fashions of our life, and when you're talking politics, you, you want people to be informed, you know, uh, to make those informed decisions and not not act on emotions or, or what somebody else says, you know. So we always try to push and, and have people on or have information that that lets people know that uh, they have a choice. They have a choice mm-hmm. out there when they come down to politics and, and sitting back and complaining about who's in office and, and what policies are being made. You have a voice in that. All you have to do is just be informed and uh, make sure that you participate, you know, in that process. You know, not just sit back and send those representatives and, you know, not be involved. So that's 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 one of the real reasons, uh, along with what I mentioned earlier about sharing those human interest stories, mm-hmm. that I think it's so important to uh, let uh, the village or, you know, the people know out there uh, as much as we can offer them. I don't understand people that say, I don't listen to the news because it's all bad news. There's a lot of bad news out there, but I have a segment on the morning show that I do, and that segment is called Good News, and I never have a problem 
finding good news. This morning, for instance, um, there was a 11 year old girl and she is in Virginia Beach and she is a wrestler and she has one more competition. And if she wins mm-hmm. that, she's going to be the top wrestler in the world. The other day, I had a 14 year old from South Africa. She has written three books, but not only has she written three books, she has funded a library for a school in Ghana, an e-library, and she is also doing a physical one. I never have problems finding good news. So the people that say they don't listen to the news because it's all bad news, what do you say to them? I don't know. You you know, it's amazing, Cheryl, when you think about that, people say they don't listen to the news, but they know everything about uh, the reality shows and (laughs) and some of the things that... uh, that create controversy, you know, on the ads. It seems like that's that's an interest. And I understand in a way because people want to be entertained and to hold people's attention, you have to have those those type of stories. But, you know, on the other hand, you know, uh, it's kind of hard to understand why people don't take in the good news. And you mentioned those stories, that story about the young lady. And we've had stories. Uh, recently we had a, a whole family on our show that uh, the mother and a son and a daughter, where all of them are authors. And the mother is an author and, and the teenage daughter is an author and all of them have published books. Mm-hmm. And those those type of stories need to get out there because you talk about looking for root causes of some of the issues and problems that's happening. Sometimes you have to, to go there. You know, it, it starts at home with families mm-hmm. and things like that. So we try to... Uh, uh, introduce those stories to to our listeners and hopefully you know they'll take interest in it and and uh just take it in and be more interested in in the in the real stories or the good news stories as you mentioned well there's so you, many of them out there so many out there it is so many out there if you're just joining in talking to james overton this morning and You know, it's not just the good news. Sometimes the news is about things that they can benefit from, like uh, Resurrection Mm -hmm. or Easter just passed. There were activities in the community that we reported about, so families might want to take part in. Uh, Recently, Nautica said April was free for veterans. Things like that that can benefit people, they're also missing out on those types of stories as well when they say, I don't listen to the news. Yes, indeed, and and I did a story. And sometimes I do. We do a lot of our shows on Portland Coffee Talk virtually. Uh, I started out in the studio, and I'll mention that who got me started here, not being a a, a graduate uh, of journalism or anything like that. Chester Benton. Now, yes, that's someone you might know, and a lot of people know of a certain age. They they would know who Chester Benton is. Chester B. Disc jockey on the, on the radios W R A P and N I S back in the day, and uh, he gave me the opportunity to come on in the morning and just have conversations with people. It was during a period I think you have to have a public service uh, program. Yes, uh, most of the stations have so early in the morning, and I started going in the studio and, and invited guests, and and uh, amazingly, the guests would get up that early mm-hmm. and come. Yeah, to the they would. Yeah, and have a conversation. And that started that until we sort of transitioned after the pandemic or during the pandemic to a virtual, which made it easier to get the guests. And, you know, it, it's, it's just been something that, that's been amazing and been able to share, like, like you, the information. And we use a lot of professors from Norfolk State as a part of, you know, when we're talking about issues where you need professionals to mm-hmm. come in and make sure that we're giving the correct information and not just our opinions. And we used to like Dr. Ernestine Duncan and Dr. Coletta Fairfax. Uh, we use uh, quite often. And, and, and as a matter of fact, and I'll say this, I try to encourage cities, you know, to use people from uh, the, the local colleges yeah. in certain areas in some of the things when they pay these companies a lot of money that come out of Ohio, you know, to study this area and you have um, a social work department at Norfolk State where they could provide a lot of that information for you. Mm-hmm. I, I sort of diverged off that, uh, sort of went uh, away from that, but I just wanted to get that in. That's very true. We have the experts right here in our own backyard and we need to use them because they've researched and they've studied just as hard as the next person. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. So tell me what has been the uh, reaction you have gotten from people 
since you have started um, your talk show. What, what do people say to you and how do people react to you in the community? You know, the, the reaction we've gotten, you know, is quite pleasant sometimes. And, and I'll say this, too, you know, it's, it's not always about about the numbers. Some people say, well, you know, I don't see a lot of people in certain shows we have or, or watching or anything like that. But you know, if I go to the grocery store or something like that, somebody would just walk up and say, hey, we listened to that, that uh, particular show that night. So we get the strong reactions because some people say, well, I never... Uh, that's something that I've been interested in for a long time, and, and that show gave me the opportunity to make a connection with that particular group. So it's been uh, pretty positive. Uh, I haven't heard much negative, except we just keep on pushing. We, we try for the numbers, but we mostly concerned about the content that Correct. we put out there. And, and uh, the numbers will come, and, you know, so we don't worry about that so much to the point where we want to put anything out there just to get the numbers. We just want to make sure we put uh, good information out there. And and like like I said, we have had good responses. See, even on our YouTube, we get uh, people that respond on YouTube. And most of those people are not from the area. They, and, they come from other areas in the United States and, and making their comments. Well, it's quite interesting that people not in the business would ask you about numbers because in reality what does that even mean to them you know what you know yes, why are they asking yes, you that what does that mean to them so yes. that's interesting do people ever offer you topics or suggestions or say oh i wish you'd cover so and so and so yeah and i we get that and 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 because you know I, i'll say i used to try to and i'm using the scheduler as far as bringing guests on and i used to try to do for a whole month, and, and that, that makes sense. That helps you out sometimes, but just like, you know, with you today, you know, sometimes people drop out, but sometimes issues come up, um, you know, on a, on a daily basis or the flavor of the month, and, and so it gives us an opportunity to, to share that. But a lot of times, anytime someone makes me a suggestion, I, I try to go out after it. And I'll, I'll say this, when you were on our show, uh, you mentioned uh, Dr. A. Andrea Warren, mm -hmm. uh, she had just been appointed as executive director of the Norfolk uh, Center. And after that, we went after her, and she came on, and we did a, uh, a interview or a con had a conversation with her. So, you know, we pick up uh, things like that. So, And I encourage people to give me subjects. But uh, okay. a lot of times it's, it's, it's people we see and we try to pursue them and, and come on and we think they have something to give. So let's do some hot topics. What are some hot topics going on in Portsmouth right now? <laughs> well, the, the latest hot topic, you know, of course, has been uh, the, the city manager. Well, uh, how we have had at least uh, four city managers in the past four years and trying to look for some stability there. And it's going to really get hot, too, because we had this election year presidential and we got uh, three seats. We have the mayor and uh, the vice mayor going for the mayorship, uh, which is, um, well, uh, that, that's another show. But anyway, and we have three other shows and five seats on, on city, uh, on the school board. So the issues are, one of the big issues are people that I see that's kind of disturbing people are picking sides uh, where, where it's a time, I believe it's more of a time for unity, trying to come together and get some stability, you know, get a city manager that's going to be here you know, longer than a year in order for us to uh, move forward. And, and, of course, it's always an issue with crime uh, and mm -hmm. some issues there. And, you know, of course, and, and as I look at the, the other cities, and I'll say this too, we, we've uh, also tried to expand and we've had um, council people from other cities in the Hampton Roads area to talk about region, regionalism, which you know, I think is important for all of us to come together that way. So, uh, but you know what? I, I don't think. I think some people have often said regionalism and said, you know what, uh, the area we should probably have, you know, make it one big area. But the problem with that is, I just don't see. If we've got seven cities. I don't see seven different mayors or six different mayors saying, okay, I'll give up my seat so we can, you know, all be one big happy family and be powerful. I don't see that happening. Do you? 
No, it won't be like that. Nobody's going to give up that power. It's not going to be like boroughs in, in New York and up, up north and things like that. But the regionalism I would envision, because I, I kind of saw it, I, I stirred on the planning commission back in the 90s, mm-hmm. in the city of Portland, and it was, I saw a lot of uh, more regionalism, us just collaborating together, sharing information of different cities, because each city had their own niche. And, and sort of sharing, okay, how do you go about this and how do you go about that? And that's the kind of regionalism we need to do because, uh, like you said, it's not going to come as one, mm-hmm. but just sharing information and sharing resources with, with each other, you know, to make the whole region. So when companies look at Hampton Roads, they look at the whole Hampton Roads and then find out which city serves them best as far as their company. But they'll look at the numbers of Hampton Roads, which would be more impressive. I would think for a company coming to the area, looking at, uh, uh, I don't know how many, three million people, as, as opposed to each individual city's, you know, so. When we are talking about communities and we're talking about uh, Gary, my friend who has his voices in the village, you know, he was talking about the fact that we need to start, we're talking about getting people to vote, we need to start with people Um, understanding that it is so important to be on the city council. It is so important to be on the school board because those people often then climb the ladder and end up in the state house. And we know how that can end up. Would you agree with that? And what are your thoughts on getting more people involved that, you know, just belonging to the PTA that's important. Yeah. And I agree with it. And my thing is always be aware, be informed, but most of all, be involved. You always heard me say that. And I think, you know, as people look for those, everybody's not set out to be a, a city council person or something like that. Correct. But if many other positions, like you mentioned the PTA or uh, boards and commissions where they can serve, and, and, and or even in your own community, uh, civic league, mm-hmm. uh, things yep. like that, where, where you can really make a difference. You, I, when I was civic league president, well, I'm, I've worn a lot of hats. The more I talk about it, I think about all the hats I've worn. Mm-hmm. But the, when I was civic league president, people would ask me, why don't I run? And I always felt that I could do more from that position than, than I could if I was in, in, in office or elected office. And that was just my opinion. And, and it turned out to be true. I mean, I got a lot more done, and I got the attention of those elected officials. So... You can get the attention of those elected officials in other positions or just being involved in your community, you know, and and making your voice be be heard. Not everybody has to run for city council or school board because not everybody, quite frankly, is qualified to hold that position. That but, that's uh, so very just true. Run because they can run. Yeah. And sometimes you, you, you block someone that's might be more qualified or might be a good uh, elected official, and by you running, you might make it hard for that person to even get elected. So. Sitting on those boards and commissions can open a lot of eyes as to the way that the city is run. I mean, it, it can be a real eye opener. And sometimes when people are suggesting people to run, you know, sometimes I think they should look in the mirror and they should say, you know what, maybe I should run for this. Maybe, maybe I, I should do. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I'm not, I wasn't trying to discourage anybody from running for public office because, you know, that's their right. And, and you never know until you, you run or we never know until we actually vote you in. <laughs> Just be prepared uh, how good you will be. But uh, right, you know, maybe you should look in the mirror. People always can tell you what to do, but you have the right. You can do the same thing. You can be just as effective uh, in, you know, uh, doing it yourself. That that is so true. And complaining or, or, or something like that. That's so true. So we, we talked about what, how the community receives uh, your talk show. What, what do your family and your friends say about you being this big time uh, community advocate with this big voice? <laughs> so they love it, uh, uh, you know, and I, one of the things I try to get my family, well, we have, let me I mention my co-host on there, Leah Drake Stiff is mm-hmm. co-host, and, and my my cousin actually is uh, Thomas the Colonel Chapman, and uh, each of us bring a different perspective to the show, and um, so uh, like you asked about the family, the family, they 
They watch constantly. Uh, the hardest thing is to trying to get one of them to come on the show because <laughs> I have a lot of family members that are involved in a lot of different things. And, you know, they say, oh, that's not me. But uh, they really uh, appreciate uh, what we are doing. And uh, that's uh, m- more gratifying to hear that from them than it is from any other place. But uh, we, we take it from any place. But having your family appreciate what you're doing is, is, is everything. My guest today, Mr. James Overton, talking about what he is doing, shaking things up in Portsmouth and shaking things up regionally as well with his talk show. You all can check it out. Uh, James, why don't you go ahead and tell people how they can check you out? Well, we, we uh, Portsmouth Coffee Talk is, is on Facebook, uh, we, and we do this show live, and that can be a problem sometimes, but uh, sometimes by doing it live, we just uh, we, we just take that chance and make sure we get the information. But we're on every Monday morning at 6, 6.30 a.m. on Facebook, on our Facebook uh, pages and on our YouTube page. And every Thursday evening at 7 p.m. on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. We were, the first half an hour was on the radio, but uh, since the summer we kind of going from that, and hopefully we can get back to that as well. But Because uh, we like to reach as many people as we can, but... And uh, let me mention, I also have a, a newly created show um, that I do called the Slim Nation One-on-One Podcast. Mm-hmm. And that's just me having one-on-one conversations with people. And you heard me mention earlier that I like to uh, uh, let people know about the person. So that gives me an opportunity to, to have that personal conversation with uh, uh, local authors. I've had local authors on and just people that want to talk about what they do and also talk about their life and how they got to the point they are today. And a lot of times I start, you know, with their elementary days and and coming up. And and because a lot of times at that age, that's what creates or forms you and uh, starts to form you into the person that you become later in life. So uh, that's another show that, uh, and I do that uh, every Tuesday and Thursday mornings at 8 8, 8 a.m. I try to impress upon the students at Norfolk State University that every single person has a story. I don't care how they dress. I don't care how they look. I don't care what they eat. I don't care what they drive. Everybody has a story. I remember working at a radio station, and I had gone back to talk to the sales assistant. She's the person that helped put the presentations together for the salespeople. And this woman... Has was starts telling me about her future plans, and she had written a manuscript about black cowgirls. Now this was every bit of twenty years ago, um, mm-hmm. and you know her research and and the writing she was doing and everything. And I'm walking through the radio station. I'm like, do y'all know what Anita is back there doing? Y'all think that all <laughs> she is is a put together this presentation I needed by three o'clock for so-and-so-and-so. But there is more to people than meets the eye. And I can tell you right now that she has been to Atlanta. She has won. Her scripts have won. And those, uh, I'm probably not going to say it right, James, those script writing contests. She's uh, man cameras for some of the TV shows that you see. And everybody has a story. And it's everybody not just the people that they highlight, they highlight, you know, certain people get all the juice, but everybody has a story. And so I hope if they don't remember anything else that I've tried to impress upon them, everybody has a story. And and real quick, Cheryl, remember when I call you to have a conversation with you, say, well, look, I, that's not something I don't know what to <laughs> Yep, it's hard for me to what turn that about? mic around. Yeah. Yeah, to turn that mic around and and and. And when you came on, there was a lot to talk about. But I've had that experience with a lot of people that didn't think they had much to talk about. But once you sort of open them up and, and then the next thing you know, they, they have you know a, a lot to share. And they're and happy to share it. Sometimes. Yeah. And happy to share it and glad they did. You know, I remember talking to I was doing a television show and I was talking to Ruby D. And Miss Ruby D was sitting there answering my questions. And then she looked at me and she says, You got me thinking about things I haven't thought about in a long time. James Overton, that was the biggest compliment. I was like, thank you, Miss Ruby, you know? Yep. 
and, and I've gotten that with somebody say, you know, nobody. I've been on a lot of shows, but nobody really asked me that. Yes. You know, and, yes. and hearing that, you know, just like you just said, hearing that for someone that's interviewing or having a conversation is is the ultimate, uh, you know, compliment. All right. One thing I do want to talk about before time is up is that we tomorrow have this eclipse that everybody is talking about. I just want to go through a few things because I don't want anybody out here looking at this eclipse with their naked eye. You have to wear eye protection. You cannot. You cannot look at the sun directly during this eclipse, even if you have on sunglasses, because you have to use specialized certified eclipse Sunglasses. I mean, and, you know, I'm sure there are people out here selling fakes, but you have to be super careful about that. So please also protect your skin, wear sunscreen, a wide brim hat, protective clothing, because there can be skin skin damage because it's going to be brighter, a brighter sun than usual that day for part of the day. And you can expect high traffic volume and plan to stay in one place, the experts say. The eclipse is going to approach the east coast around 2 p.m. Totality is going to begin around 3.13 p.m. and end around 17 p.m. This is eastern time. And uh, we don't really know how long it will last. It depends on where you are. But for mm-hmm. some, the total eclipse could be as long as four minutes. So you all, please, there's a, a website you can check out. It's called Eclipse2024.org. Eclipse2024.org. James Overton, why don't you, before we get out of here, tell everybody once again about your projects and how they can get involved. Okay, thank you. And uh, great information, by the way. Great information. I hope people, a lot of people hear that. And again, uh, for some coffee talk, uh, we're every Monday morning at 6.30 a.m. on Facebook and our YouTube channel. And, and, and we're live. And every Thursday evening at 7 p.m. with uh, topics, issues, and special guests. And I also have um, a podcast called the Slim Nation 101's Podcast. Uh, every Tuesday morning at 8 and every Thursday morning at 8 a.m. And, James, I didn't talk to you about the NCAA, but who's going to win all of this, men and women? Who's winning it all well, on the men's side? Well, you know, uh, I haven't really been watching the men that much. It's, it's, <laughs> That's what everybody says. I know more of the women's names than I know of, of, of the men, and my focus has been on, on the women's game, being an extra Ex basketball player myself, I'm just amazed at uh, how these women play. And I think it's going to be uh, South Carolina. It's going to be tight. You got Iowa coming up in there. Mm-hmm. It, it's going to be. They broke the record yesterday with 12 million people watching. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right, right. You know the women's game. So the the men's game, you're going to have to tell me. <laughs> well, I don't know who's going to win for the men, but I certainly do enjoy watching NC State with the black coach that was almost going to be fired, and now he's yeah. gotten a bonus yeah. and extensions and all of that. And I love Mr. DJ Burns because he is in that game and he is just playing and having fun. So I don't know if NC State is going to win it all, but I have enjoyed watching those men. And as for the women, I don't know it's going to be tight. I have my favorites, but it's going to be tight. It's going to be tight. And and that's what you want in those yeah. games. When you get to that point, you, know, yeah. you have to. You want to have the best, too. You don't want to see a runaway, mm-hmm. and you want to see a good game. You know. And, I, I, I just hope the NBA it. looks at what's going on now and say, okay, well, we'll get back to playing real basketball now. We're not going to just pull up and shoot and play no defense and, you know, yeah. you know, yeah. positionless football, I mean, basketball, as I call it, because it's just I don't watch the NBA, but I, hopefully yeah, they will and, see. And, mm-hmm, go ahead. Frankly, I don't either. I don't either, and that's amazing to me because I'm a basketball from way back, and you know, I, I was the kind of guy that played center, played my my back to the basket, and that's what mm-hmm. I see the girls doing, playing defense and, and right. all that kind of stuff. And you know, the points will come if you play all those fundamental stuff. That's and I don't it. see that in the NBA. You know, so. Yeah, and 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 the way the people are watching the women, and even the college men, they are playing real basketball. So hopefully, the pros will get back to playing real basketball. 
Indeed. Yeah, that's, that's the only thing that's going to bring me back. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining us on the line today. I want to thank everybody who listened. And look, you all go out, have a super fantastic week. I thank you for listening because I know you had other choices. So again, thank you. And as always, behold the green and gold.